You want to see something cool? This is the Ekahau Psychic 2. The Psychic 2 is serious professional gear designed to plan out and test new and existing Wi Fi deployments, and it has a serious price tag of $10,000. I'm going to use it to map out my home and see if the single Ubiquiti U6 LR access point I've installed completely covers every corner of my place or if I could benefit from installing yet another access point. Let's get to it. Before we get into it, let's talk about Wi-Fi signals, why a tool like this exists, and why it is just so damn expensive. And the short answer is this. To some degree, Wi-Fi signal propagation is a bit of black magic. Radio waves in either 2.4, 5, and now even 6 gigahertz ranges pass through and bounce around an interior space and behave differently depending on the materials around them. For example, walls and floors will either reflect, absorb, or pass through radio waves depending on what those walls are made out of. In a home like mine, the walls are made out of wood and sheetrock, which, depending on frequency, tends to allow more signals to pass through them. And in office spaces, the walls are typically made with metal studs and sheetrock which will cause Wi-Fi signals to be reflected or absorbed differently due to the metal in the walls. When a company relies on wireless as a critical part of their business, making sure the signal is available and reliable everywhere is really important. For example, imagine being in a warehouse with tall metal racks and people running around with scanners and tablets. Floor to ceiling metal racks cause all sorts of reflections and signal quality issues, so where you place your access points make all of the difference. Or in a hospital, where Wi-Fi reliability and connectivity might mean the difference between life and death. You can guarantee that they're validating their Wi-Fi. Sure, you could just roam around with your laptop, periodically checking to see if you have all three little Wi-Fi bars, but that's only an indicator of signal strength and not an indicator of quality. And that's where the expensive side comes in. The Sidekick and its corresponding software allow you to import a floor plan of the area you're surveying and walk the space to build a real-time visual map of how well your Wi-Fi is penetrating in a given area. And in deployments where you have multiple access points around you, show you how those access points overlap and interact, giving you the clearest view of your wireless coverage. The software also allows you to plan deployments by creating predictive assessments, evaluate if you're over-provisioned or under-provisioned with APs, and can help you tune your deployments correctly. All of that tech, processing, and logic costs the big dollars. Now, obviously a piece of gear like this isn't something a typical person would have a reason to own. I know I don't have a spare 10K laying around to buy one, but given the opportunity to try one out and share it with you, I jumped at the chance. Let's start from the beginning. Let's look at my floor plan. This is the floor plan of my home. I have two floors. On the left is the first floor or ground floor, and on the right is the second floor. My home is just a bit over 3,000 square feet or nearly 279 square meters for our metric friends. I currently have just one single Ubiquiti U6 LR Wi-Fi 6 access point that's mounted on the ceiling of my second floor. I chose this location because it was close to the center of my home and because my front entryway opens up to the second floor. I figured having a giant hole down to the first floor very near the AP would mean good signal propagation. We'll find out soon enough. The system requires a laptop or a tablet, and the Psychic hangs off my side like a satchel. Now that I'm geared up, let's start taking some measurements. All right, let's take a walk. This is me surveying the first floor. The way the software works is crazy. As I walk around, it tracks my movement with the combination of the camera and gyroscope in the iPad and GPS in the Sidekick. As I move through my house, it's taking measurements multiple times a second in 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz frequency bands. Once we've completed the walk, we'll put all of these measurements into the desktop app to crunch the numbers and build a true map of my home Wi-Fi. I'm gonna speed this up a bit just for fun. I think we got it. I've done the whole house, so now it's time to see what it looks like. This is the desktop app from Ekahau called AI Pro. This software takes the Psychic's measurements, does the math, and shows us the amount of signal strength and quality of my home Wi-Fi. We're looking at just my first floor, and we've selected to see only one of my SSIDs and ignore the rest because, as you can imagine, there's just a ton of wireless networks out there. You're currently looking at the map of the 5 GHz band, and overall, I'm really pleased to say it looks pretty good. There are a few areas that are a little light, like the back left corner, which is the dining room, a little in the upper right corner, which is the family room, and down in the bottom right corner, it's light as well. That's the garage, and believe it or not, that's caused by the car I have parked in there, blocking signals when I walked by it. Let's take a look at the 2.4 GHz map. 2.4 shows a similar picture with even worse coverage over in the top left dining room and down in the garage in the bottom right corner. 
Here's a good example of the strange nature of signal propagation in wireless. You are looking at my living room side by side in 5 and 2.4 gigahertz. It's fascinating to see how the 5 gigahertz coverage is relatively even with what feels like a predictable drop in signal the further away you go. Then you look at the 2.4 gigahertz map and see all sorts of interesting measurements like this area here. What causes the signal to propagate like this is what I meant by black magic, and that's where a tool like this has its value. There's clearly interesting things going on with signal propagation in the 2.4 GHz range. But that being said, overall, downstairs is looking pretty well covered with my single AP. Let's look upstairs. Okay, here's the upstairs in 2.4 GHz. That big white circle there in the middle is my access point. Interestingly enough, I didn't tell the Psychic or the AI Pro software where on my floor plan my AP was located. It used all of those data points to locate it based on radio telemetry, and that is pretty damn cool. Looking over my map, it's clear that I'm more than covered upstairs in the 2.4 GHz range, though I'm a little light down the bottom end of my floor plan. Let's take a look at the 5 GHz range. 5 GHz looks very similar, with the same area at the bottom being lighter in coverage. I did find it surprising that up at the top right corner again, we see interesting signal propagation. That area is my master bathroom, and there are a bunch of walls between that area and my AP, but the thing I think is really fascinating in this area is here. I'm going to make an educated guess here, and I'm probably totally wrong, but go with me here. Here is a bedroom with a window that points out to the neighbor's house next door. The signal strength is really strong through here due to its proximity to the AP and line of sight. My bathroom right here has a really large window that looks out at the same neighbor's house. It's entirely possible that the increase in signal that we see in this area is actually signal bouncing through the bedroom window, outside off of the neighbor's house, and back into my bathroom via the other window. Obviously, this is a theory, but the signal mapping does kind of imply that's the case. Either way, without mapping this, I would have never known that that was a possibility. And that is pretty wild. One last cool thing I want to show you, and that is that this software provides a real-time spectrum analyzer of the wireless spectrum around me. This isn't a super special feature, there's lots of free software out there that can do that for you now with the built-in wireless adapter you have in your own computer. But for those who've never seen it before, let's take a look. What you're looking at here is a real-time visualization of the 5 gigahertz spectrum in my house. A spectrum analyzer shows you a visual representation of signals and their power or DBM. The higher the peaks, the more signal strength there is. All Wi-Fi spectrum is broken into channels which are shown on the x-axis at the bottom of the graph. Your Wi-Fi access point at home is transmitting on one or many channels depending on the Wi-Fi generation, bandwidth, and technology your AP supports. This super wide chunk in the middle is my AP transmitting on 5 GHz. The Spectrum Analyzer shows all of the signals in 5 GHz it's receiving, and that includes visible and hidden SSIDs from other routers and access points in the area. The further or weak those signals are away from the receiver, the lower and less prominent they appear on the graph. There are far less devices out there using the 5 GHz range compared to 2.4 GHz, so let's switch over to the 2.4 GHz spectrum and have a look at it. And holy cow, look at how much more congested and busy the 2.4 GHz spectrum is. If you're wondering why your cheap IoT device from Amazon doesn't work reliably over Wi-Fi, this is why. There are so many devices in the world using 2.4, and that includes Bluetooth, microwaves, old cordless phones, and more, and they're all fighting for that same space. The more devices, the more noise, the harder it is for those devices, especially cheaper ones, to hear their intended signals. Can you say interference, anyone? This experience has confirmed a few things for me about Wi-Fi. First, it's clear that my choice of the U6LR was a good one for my home, and placing the AP in the middle of my house on the second floor ceiling was the right decision. If you're planning a Wi-Fi deployment, it's a smart idea to get that AP located as centrally as possible, and if you can afford a powerful one like the U6LR, you should do it. The other thing this has reaffirmed for me is just how dynamic Wi-Fi coverage can be. In your home or business, there are so many factors that have an impact on how well your Wi-Fi signal propagates. If you have coverage issues, consider moving your APs around to see if that fixes your coverage. Or if you have the big dollars, buy an Ekahal Psychic and make a side business out of fixing other people's Wi-Fi. And that will do it for this video. Thank you so much to our YouTube members. If you enjoyed this content and you want to help support us, consider joining. We'd appreciate it. And now that you've finished this video, check out this place over here of other great hardware we've reviewed in the past. Thanks for watching.